Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I got the Chevelle up in the air because today's project is UMI Performance Coilover Conversion, as well as taking out uh, the original control arms and replacing them with these new tubular units. So what it consists of is a relocation bracket, basically a coilover conversion, and it takes the stress out of the original components and upgrades it with these bolt-on parts. So everything you see there is uh, what you're gonna go with. You got the 150 pound springs for the rear. And then that basically replaces the original stamped weak components of my 50 year old suspension. These springs have sprung their sprung. They have been sagging and basically sitting on the bump stops. And as you can see, got quite a bit of bushing deterioration there. So we'll be replacing the lower control arm, the upper control arm, both sides as well as the springs. And the relocation bracket actually mounts to this location and puts the coil spring going up there. We'll also be installing a strut that goes in between the two braces. So I'll try to do a little follow along because as you know, I try to do walkthroughs of things that don't previously exist. And this one did not previously exist. So stay tuned. So I've got the wheels removed. Uh, I've gone around and hit all the components with a PB blaster and let that sit for a minute. I went ahead before I lifted the car and measured the height of the front and the height of the rear. We were at 28 inches in the front, both sides, 24 and a quarter and 24 and a half on that other side. It was always sagging on this side a little bit, but uh, yeah, while that's PB blaster is going to be penetrating or whatever, we're going to remove the, uh, the shocks first. That'll allow the side to droop enough to get that spring out of there. And what we're gonna do is uh, one side at a time. Basically, if you remove both at the same time, the axle will shift forward and we don't wanna do that. So I'm probably just gonna videotape uh, just doing one side and as it goes through, that way I don't have to double up everything, but that's how it's gonna go. All right, so all I did was remove the uh, shock bolts up there and basically wedge down on the uh, axle and the spring pops out like that. Basically one second of operation that, that's it you won't be utilizing anything up there just cool make sure that insulator's gone off of there and uh that's pretty much it in that area next step is uh getting off that stuff there to uh the right, bracket just on. looking through i've got the springs out on both sides and now i'm going to start with uh doing the control arms on just that side but just to show you how shot this rear end is that's just using up and down force. Those bushings are holding basically nothing, but it'll be a little bit different come the end of this project, but that's, imagine getting on it and every time you give it a little bit of torque and your car actually goes yaw and then does this just because the ass in is doing that. But yeah, that's what we're gonna fix. All right, just a little update. Everything's pretty straightforward. Basically you remove the original uh, lower control arm and you put this one in its place and then this bracketry just goes on there and you slip it in but it goes in the place of the original control arm and this is where the new uh, coilover will go and it's going to go up into where the original shock spot was but anyway this right here is a pain in the ass I knew it was going to be but that bushing uh, the best way to do it is to get a 5 16 drill bit and you basically put it into the like that and let it just eat around and you'll end up pulling rubber out pardon my friend you can also drill just individual holes so this seems to work best and ends up pulling it out all right well can't actually tighten anything up until they get it back on the ground but we've got a lower control arm in coil over bracket on upper control arm in these guys are a bitch here but I uh, got them and then uh, got the frame reinforcement done both sides the only thing that I see that's gonna be a possible issue is that tolerance right there next to that bolt the mufflers the mufflers were a plan to do anyway for me because they did a really shitty job doing stuff like that and i was gonna have that but basically muffler just needs to be resituated maybe even closer to the drive shaft but i don't think it'll be a problem for the time being same thing right there a little bit close for tolerance but other than that man 
this is so much before you could almost go way up and down but so much tighter next is the coilovers all right time for the rear coilover springs so uh, what it is i have it set up right here this is the model number c209-u which will be for the rear end it comes with some components for you to be able to put whatever kind of uh inserts you need for your application and i have the 150 pound rated spring which is for a big block and as far as the assembly goes, this dude will go on first. And when you install it on the unit, you will put the raised edge facing up. And then this goes down over the top of that. Basically, that's a lock nut. This goes down over the top of it. Put on some anti-seas right there so it'll go up and down without galling. I invested in the roller bearing setup, thrust washer bearing. That'll go down over the top. Like that and that makes whenever you're adjusting the spring a whole lot easier because it rolls really that's actually really smooth and then this guy will come and index over the top of that and then slide down over the top of the spring after you put the spring on so uh, then it goes up into the car so uh, I'm gonna assemble these real quick and uh, be right back with you all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the uh, the first collar nut right here do it with the raised side up Take that, slide it on that guy, send it on down towards the bottom, just like that. Next, we're going to take the actual positioning nut with the collar up, and slide that on down, before we get it all the way down there, I'm going to apply a little bit of anti seize right there to get the threads. Do it on both sides there. I think it's got some good application. I don't know how much of this adjustment is going to be needed, but at least we don't have to worry about it galling up. And that should get the threads applied pretty good. You can always come back and add more if you need to. So now that it's working in there, it's actually got a pretty good application. So then we're going to go with the thrust washer. It came with an original little washer at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and put that one on there as well. And then the thrush washers on top of that. So those slide down there like that. And you got a nice little, less than any friction seemingly. Next, to go down with the spring. You may have to pull the shock on up out. And then you take this guy and index it onto spring like so and kind of push that down like that and it all holds in it's just kind of too thin and then just take the uh, not the bottom one but this one and kind of increase the tension on it until you can't pull that collar out and uh, you're now developing tension on the spring and it's also would be adjusting your ride height the more you adjust it up this way, ride height goes up. The more you adjust it down, the more your ride height drops. So uh, we'll send this on up there just for good measure right now. And uh, hopefully it's at the right height to uh, get it into the car. If not, I'll come and adjust the collar down and pull the, the shock out as needed. So but other than that, that's the simple operation of uh, that. Once you get on the road, you have one for rebound and one for shock. So you'll be able to adjust that. So or compression and rebound. And they're just basically one click in between each one of them. But that's uh that's that. Let's get it up into the car. Well, actually, I'm gonna put in the the proper components up there, and then we'll get into the car. All right, now I'm at the hardest part of this whole project, and I've read more countless pain in the ass moves for this thing, but it's getting this strut cross member mounted above the shock mount or the the, cro the coilover mount. And basically, I just wanted to document the way that I did it. I got the nut and I slid it up over the top of the thing like it's supposed to be with this middle finger over the top and I was able to hold it over the hole and slid this bolt up through while holding the nut above the hole and just kind of wobbled it back and forth until I was able to get it to bite and that's it. But basically hand up right over here on the cross member, middle finger over the nut and then using my right hand 
to twist the bolt until it just came a whole while it was kind of just hanging out right here by the you know shot out but that's it right there now to this side well i was getting to the suspension preload getting it mocked up with that so the weight of the axle or the car was on the axle so i could get these guys in there but the unfortunate thing is the exhaust pipe the way it's routed up and over it comes too close to where this needs to travel down as you can see from where the original shot mount was to where it mounts now is right in line with that and it's the exact same thing on the other side so without the exhaust pipe gone you won't be able to put on the coil over which is unfortunate but uh i think the uh the option there is this is already stove pipe pretty shittily on there anyway best bet is probably to move that piping closer to the drive shaft and maybe just do turn downs coming out or something i really don't know that would be up to you all right little update obviously like i mentioned before everything is really straightforward as far as just basically replacement the only thing that's new is bolting up this bracket right here and putting that stuff up there other than that uh, you're just replacing parts for in here these were kind of squirrely trying to get that but you can see how that is braced down to that so it all stays in like a little triangulation but anyway i got the uh shock tower uh cross member up there tightened to 35 foot pounds i've got this bolt here and this bolt here tightened to 60 pounds i've got all four of both sides up and down tightened to 72 pounds for the uh control arm bolt and next i'm going to just prop this up there with the bolts in there and these tighten down to 50 foot pounds but uh after this uh get to go to the front end oh by the way i actually already adjusted and set down and readjusted and set down and i originally started out at 24 and a quarter on this side and 24 and a half on this side i'm now sitting at 26 and a quarter both sides and i have a little bit more thread to go up a little bit high but it's exactly where i want to be on the rear end and uh i'll have some pictures or a video of it later to show the height that i have it set in the rear i may adjust it a little bit once the front goes down just a tad so it's at 28 in the front we want to get kind of close to 26 level if not a little short rate but other than that man this thing has been straightforward the only pain in the butt has been that stress so uh, let's continue all right moment of truth project coilover conversion got both the front end coilovers changed out everything's all settled down I'm about to do a roll test with it bring it out to the yard but for right now the rear end was set at 26 and a quarter here that's from ground to center of fender let's see where we're at I'm hoping that it's going to be about level and we're at 26 and a quarter all right same here I did a little bit of bounce test. We're at 26 and a quarter, man. I couldn't be more happy with this thing just by guesstimating before even bringing it outside. And we're at, uh, I might have to come up a little bit on this side, but 26. But it might change after doing the bump test. But for just uh, guesstimating, that's uh, that's level fender. So it probably looks like it's got a slight rake in the front, but compared to what it was, it looked like it was launching off in the front and that ass end was sagging. But that right there is awesome. Couldn't be happier. Can't wait to get this thing on the road and see how much different it handles, performs, feels. I can already tell by bouncing up and down on the car that it uh, is very tight. It's not squishy like driving a sofa. <laughs> anyway, that's it.